Psalm 100 is a familiar psalm, I think. Um, I just happened to be looking through my, some stuff in my bookshelf the other day. <clears throat> Ran across a little Bible that I got as a, um, an award, I guess, when I was maybe five, six. Um, and looked at the inside of it, and it was signed by the Sunday school teacher when I was a little kid in Vancouver, Washington. For It was an award for memorizing the 100th Psalm. King James, by the way. So, at any rate, um, this is a common, favorite, frequently used psalm for Thanksgiving. So I want us to look at Psalm 100, wonderful scripture. Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him. And bless his name, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. There are two words mentioned here that are important, and I I don't want to make too much of a hair-splitting definition here, but we see two words, thanksgiving and praise, and technically... The, the two overlap to where you can hardly separate them. But there is a slight difference. Praise is what believers offer to God for who He is, His character. Thanksgiving is slightly different. It's directed toward God for His gifts, for what He gives us. Praise is for who He is. And there should be gratitude just for who He is, not merely for what He puts into our hand and the command the thanksgiving and praise is on virtually every page of scripture there are several aspects of that slight difference thanksgiving that i want to look at reasons why what he what he gives us and all that he has to say about Thanksgiving. I hadn't seen the video um, that we showed earlier in the service till this morning. Um, it, it speaks exactly to what this psalm is talking about and what the full meaning of Thanksgiving is. First, Thanksgiving is a charge. Now, what do we mean by charge? It's a commandment. Thanksgiving is not just advice. It is not um, if you really want to be extra special, be thankful. It's a command. In fact, if we if it's a command, it's not an option. We're commanded to be thankful. In fact, if you've ever read Romans one carefully. There is the um, description of the awful moral degradation, debauchery, depravity of the human race and the human heart. And there are three different levels, really, of depravity. Um, And between those three different levels, in Romans 1, you'll find the words and God gave them over to such and such. In other words, it's a, a level of depravity based on belligerent, impenitent refusal to listen. And so God finally steps aside and says, all right, just go to, go to complete debauchery. Unthankfulness, or says they were not grateful is in the third level. 
Now, that doesn't sound as bad as some of the earlier stuff he mentions. He's talking about murder and adultery and all kinds of stuff. But he says, neither were they thankful in the third grade down of depravity. So God pays attention to the attitude of thankfulness. But it's never intended as a command. When I say it's a command, it's not intended to be a dreary kind of duty. Well, we've got to be thankful. Obviously, if I have that attitude, God's not. He won't acknowledge it. Now, there's a little little song. I can't remember if it's more of a hymn or it was a Sunday school song, but it was Count Your Many Blessings. Name them one by one. <clears throat> if you do that, it buoys up your soul because you're obeying. You're, you're, you're being obedient. You're doing what we're supposed to do. I'm being thankful. And not as a dreary kind of punching like candy bars in a machine. Punch E, one, and you'll get a Snickers. Thank God in my prayer and I'll, he'll keep giving me blessings. No, it has to be genuine. I thank you, Lord. In that video we watched, there were people who mentioned losing, saying goodbye to people they didn't want to say goodbye to. Going through hard, deep, tempest trials. Those are real. Be thankful, he said. It's a command. It's a charge. Second, it's a challenge. Sometimes to be be thankful is a challenge. It's not my first response. It's often my first response is, what in the world? Why is this happening? What's going on here? Where's God at? Now, I want to be careful here in... I want to be careful what I say. God understands the whys. But it depends on the attitude behind it that he's interested in. A good example is the contrast between Zacharias, the priest, the father of John the Baptist. The angel Gabriel, sent from heaven, appeared to him and said, you're going to have a son about the time of life. In other words, a year from now, nine months from now, he was in the temple doing his service and said, you'll have a son. His question was, how will this be? We can't hear his tone of voice. There's a lot we can't see. However, the angel Gabriel, he didn't have that good of a reaction. (laughs) And we know enough because he said, because you didn't believe me, You're going to be deaf and dumb until he's born. So he was reminded every day, don't ask why the way I asked it. You understand? The same Gabriel using almost exactly the same sentence that he uttered to Zacharias was sent six months later to Mary. He used almost the same words in announcing, you're going to have a son. She said almost the same words as Zachariah, how shall this be? But the attitude behind it, we know, was one of submission and recognition that in that especially in that culture, she would be looked upon as an an adulterous, loose woman, and her reputation would be done, and she would never, ever have a husband. 
she said, what, what was her response? She said, behold the handmaiden of the Lord. In other words, Lord, I'll submit to your will. And she had some idea, or thought she did, of what it would bring about. Now, God had a different plan. And so 2,000 years later, her name is still praised. But in that day, when that announcement came to her, she had to think, my life's over. My life is over. But Lord, if that's your will, I'm your handmaid, and you do with me as you please. So God does not chasten us, rebuke us for the, the whys that come from a grieving, I don't understand heart, but we cannot mix into it that deep kind of questioning like you don't know what you're doing why in the world would you do something like that and I don't like it and I've served you for how many ever years and this is what I get don't do that I hear often out of the mouth of preachers and in Christian books it's okay to be angry with God I'd prefer not to try that I don't want to stand at judgment day with recently on my lips some questioning. Now, I don't want you to think that I'm, I, you know that I'm a wonderful human being um, or a, a, a beautiful person. Um, I was, I got in the car yesterday and uh, with my grandson and we were going to go someplace and we started driving and I didn't turn where he thought I should turn he says well don't shouldn't you turn there and I said no um, because we're we're going such and such and that's down by whatever and he said no that's not the way to go now I didn't reach over and do something to him uh, the cab's a little too big to get over there and there's a console in the middle but and I didn't go nuts on him, but my thought, and I told him, I said, hey, I know what I'm talking about, and get that tone of voice out of your, get that tone out of your voice. Okay? I imagine God thinks the same thing. When little pipsqueaks like us, <laughs> who don't know what will happen to us at 2 o'clock today. And God knows the futures it rolls out for millennia. He says, here's, here's what I'm going to do. What are you doing? You should have turned back there. Don't do that. But Thanksgiving, because of that, and because of our inability to understand, and we can't see God's hand, one of the Psalms talks about God. It says, His footsteps are not known. I can't track God. <clears throat> I don't know what directions He's going. Sometimes I don't know, and sometimes we'll never know till judgment. We'll never know. Why did He permit this or do that or not bring this to pass that I deeply wished for? Why? I don't know. But we have to come back to this he is all wise I love this little proverb there is no wisdom or counsel or knowledge against the Lord we can't cook up some argument that will stump him and he goes Man, I never thought of that well that changes everything he doesn't do that he knows and he is infinitely and eternally good he's good He's wise. He doesn't make mistakes. He's never made a mistake. That then is what helps me face the challenge of at times being thankful when it seems that what God has willed in his circumstances are very unpleasant, grievous. Thanksgiving can be a challenge. Third, but Thanksgiving's a choice. 
It is, it is a decision of the will to be thankful. Um, I wish. We're not all made the same. I wish I were wired differently um, sometimes. Um, because my gift, my greatest spiritual gift, is to tell you what I know is going to go wrong. Um, and I'm infallible. <laughs> Never been wrong. Um, I wish I were like some of my family members. Like dear people I know who just have a happier outlook on life. And even if things don't go good, well, it's going to be okay. We'll get through it. It's going to work out. No, it's not. Um, I like to refer to myself, I am not a pessimist, I'm a realist. But no one believes that. Um, <clears throat> so sometimes there's more of a conscious choice you have to make to say, now listen, <clears throat> all the things that may seem to be bugging me now that I could only put on, maybe count on one hand. Look at the thousands of things down through our lives that God's done to us, blessed us with, helped us, never failed us here, shielded us from that, and how many things I don't have any idea that God just said, no, I'm not going to let that come into their life. And I don't know it, and you don't either. I have no idea what God has spared me from. None of us do. It's a choice then to say, Lord, it is just dumb. <laughs> it's not right not to consciously focus on, Lord, look what you've given me. Look what you've done for us. Look how you've helped us. Look what you've gifted us with. When, especially, when we weren't even right with God. It's a choice. It's a decision of the will, an act of the will. God gives me the grace to do it. I think this, though, generally, the grace, the grace to be thankful in unpleasant settings is given when I first choose to be thankful. He doesn't give me the grace to be thankful and then I choose to do it. He said, you be thankful. So when we face those times and we're un unpleasant, it seems like everything's not going right, we choose and immediately upon our choice, God's grace floods our hearts and we're, we are able then, by His grace, He said, my grace is sufficient, we're able then to be thankful. And it becomes easier. It becomes then not only, it doesn't become a chore. It ceases to be a chore and a difficult choice. It actually warms my heart, fills my soul, puts wind under my wings. And our faith takes flight. And we're encouraged. <clears throat> I'll never have it, I don't hope or believe <clears throat> that I'll have it as bad as David. <clears throat> David was fleeing from Saul and he'd been, I don't know how many years by then, living out in caves and, and um, hiding among the Philistines. And he, he made this statement. He says, there's, there's but a step between me and death. I'm that close to falling in the hands of Saul and all of the people that are after me. And I'm, I'm moving every night and I've got, I mean, it's horrible. He goes off. He goes off to fight a battle with his soldiers, had, which were a rabble bunch, people in debt, it said, and distressed and disgruntled and mad, and that's that was his bunch of about six hundred soldiers. They go off to fight a battle, leave their wife and kids in the little village of Ziklag, and it's still there. While they were gone, a roving band of the Amalekites came and sacked that little village, took all the people captive, burned the whole place, and as they were far off, they could see the smoke of that as they returned. And they come into that 
their, their wives are gone, their kids are gone, livestock are gone, everything's gone. What they had left was, is burning. Then David's soldiers took a, you know, a vote of confidence, let's put it that way. <laughs> and they voted to stone him. <laughs> this is your fault. Not only did he have the loss personally, but now his soldiers, let, let's kill David, because he did this. What was his response? I forget this so often. What was his response? He didn't start texting people and, you know, making phone calls or getting on Facebook. It said David went away, got away, and encouraged himself in the Lord. Begin to remind himself, okay, I was in a mess with the lion when I was a shepherd boy, and God helped me. A bear came, and God helped me. And he started encouraging himself in the Lord. And it's interesting to me that once he had encouraged himself, then he heard, God, he heard God's voice telling him what to do about it. He didn't, he didn't know what to do. But once he encouraged himself, then the Lord spoke to him and said, go after these guys. And he said, you will with, he said these words, without fail, you will recover everything. Go after them. So he did. And not only did he recover his wives, his children, all their wives, their children, their livestock, everything. But they took such a massive amount of stuff that they had stolen from other people and other raids that he, they, they were, who knows, quadruple rich, enriched by what had happened, what they recovered. But he didn't hear God tell him how to re deal with this until he got encouraged and encouraged himself in God. Now, so Thanksgiving is a choice. <clears throat> Thanksgiving, fourth, is a check. Thanksgiving is a check. What do I mean by a check? I mean it is a barrier. It is a pause. It is a door that's closed on pride, self-sufficiency, self-confidence in the right sense I mean it, overconfidence it is a wall against pride boasting self-promotion self-reliance I built this company no you didn't I did this I did that <clears throat> I pulled myself up by my bootstraps God doesn't like that either he didn't like that. It is to be thankful is to always be reminded, as he says here in Psalm 100, you didn't make yourself. I did. You're my creation. I gave you what you have. Every opportunity you have, I gave it to you. Every gift you have, every ability that you have, what you were born with, I gave that to you. There is, it is really, it is a huge offense to God for us to boast about things in our life that are not a result of our gifts or abilities, but from Him, but we act as if they were ours. He doesn't like that. Thanksgiving is deep gratitude, acknowledgement of dependence, the acknowledgement at what Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. That's a good place for us to be. You know what? To be able to say, I don't know what in the world to do. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know how to handle this. I need God. We need the Lord. We need His help. That's the best place that we can be. So thanksgiving is a check to getting off the track and beginning to Get lifted up in our own eyes. There's several kings in the Old Testament that are spoken of. When they were little in their own eyes, God exalted them. But when they were lifted up in their hearts, 
God destroyed them. The proud, God says, are an abomination to me. And there, James 4 speaks of, says, the humble God gives grace to, but the proud, the word there is a military word. And it means literally to set himself in array against, meaning to lay out a battle plan. Here's this guy out here who is strutting around like a banny rooster in the barnyard, and I don't like it. <clears throat> so here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a couple of cannon over here. We're going to have some grenade launchers over here, and we're getting ready, and we're getting the distances all figured out to wipe him out. That's what the word means. God sets himself in array against the proud. So thanksgiving is a hedge against that. It's a check on it. Finally, Thanksgiving is a channel. It is a means to something. <clears throat> when I genuinely thank God, here's a couple things, five or six, that I receive. When I'm genuinely thankful, I receive power. Paul and Silas, in a dungeon filled with the stench of bodies of prisoners that it, they, when, when you got into the dungeon you were let down by a rope or something and you didn't come out if you died they just left your body in there and then the next people got le got let down on in a rope to be sitting there beside a corpse that's where paul and silas were and for good measure they put their feet in the stocks so they couldn't move and at midnight, there's no light in there. You, you ever been? Have you ever gone into um, a cave or something? We used to go over to, we, we would camp when I was a little kid. We'd go over in eastern Oregon and had a lot of lava tubes because there's a lot of volcanic activity, Cascade Range. And so you would go to these um, lava tubes, these caves, and they were lit, and you'd have a forest or you know, a ranger or whoever take you back in there. And then they would always then do this thing. Now, they gather you together, turn off your flashlights. The lights in here are going to go out, and you're going to understand, you're going to feel what and see what true absence of any light is like. And I don't know how, <laughs> why it's so different, but even it doesn't matter. Um, when you shut the lights off on top of the ground, I mean, it's black. It, it's uncanny black. And you see nothing. And you try to feel your face, and you put your hand, you, nothing. That's what Paul and Silas were in. They're in a filthy, stench-filled dungeon. Their backs beaten in cases in some places, probably their ribs shown because they scourged them with a whip that had bits of metal in it and they would drag it across their back and cut them clear to the bone. And they're down there in that. And it says, at midnight, they prayed, sang, gave thanks to God. Whew. I'm not here saying you people need to be like that. I don't know how in the world you do that. Unless you choose to be thankful and you put it into action. And what happened? Well, of course we know. Great power came on their behalf, not only into their own hearts, but the earthquake came, shook the doors open of every single... Peculiar earthquake. Never had one like this before or since. This was an earthquake that not only shook the ground, but it unlocked every single prison door. And it took the shackles off of every person's wrists and loosened the stocks that their feet were in. That's a weird earthquake. And God founded a church out of that. Power comes to our hearts when we are thankful. Favor comes to us. God, he, God loves thanksgiving. 
help comes to us, God tells us what to do. He bails us out. He saves us. He gives us grace to deal with it. Increases our faith. Increases our joy. Even when we shouldn't have joy, the world would think. Grants us his presence. God's presence draws near when we thank him. It's our proper place. God inhabits praise, the psalm says. So, I know, and you know as well as I do, that we can't just emphasize Thanksgiving on Thanksgiving Day. It, it is meant by God to be a lifestyle act of worship. Let us, then, by the grace of God, practice, choose, consciously to be thankful. Some of us, and I say us, not you, some of us need to practice that more and work more at it. I do. What God has done for me and done for each of us Let's bow our heads, and I want us to just take a few minutes, maybe just a minute or two of silence before Dan closes in prayer. <clears throat> but I want you to consciously thank God, if you can. Think of things that maybe you've not thanked Him for, for a long time, that, that matter, that came from God. Let's pray.